Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Daniel Hernandez. Good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Daniel Hernandez, and I'll be moderating this panel on advocacy. Um, and I'm here with Margaret Newman and Gabe Metcalf, and uh, the, from, from Margaret's from New York, and Gabe is from San Francisco. Two. Uh, cities very dear to my heart. I actually started my development career in San Francisco and I was on the board of SPUR uh, in San Francisco and now I'm on the board of MAS here in New York. So um, they're great advocacy organizations and what we're going to talk a little bit about this afternoon is about advocacy. My background is really strongly embedded in community development, community organization, I, uh, but my career led to other types of development work. But Advocacy has always been at the root of it. So we're going to talk a little bit about how advocacy is defined within these amazing organizations that started really in the middle of the last century. Um, giving a voice um, to citizens, um, neighborhoods, people, um, and have had amazing legacy projects in, the, in their trajectory of their organizations. So I want them to talk a little bit about um, their definition of advocacy, how they actually advance advocacy within cities, um, and how um, actually cities have changed. So the role of an adv of advocacy maybe in the 1950s looks much different um, than the role of advocacy in, uh, in 2014. So um, I'm gonna start with Margaret and see what she has to say about MAS's role in advocacy in New York City. So thank you, Daniel, and I want to welcome my colleague from San Francisco as well, um, since we're, we're the host city today. Um, so um, I've joined MAS uh, this past year after a, a lengthy um, sojourn in city government, um, and Daniel has now uh, replaced uh, um, uh, me, and well, not in my role, but uh, has moved over to city government. So um, MAS started in the 19th century, uh, for those of you who don't know the history of the organization, and I think a lot has changed since 1893 when the organization was founded. And, and I was really interested to know when MAS uh, was, uh, when I was looking at the history in, before I, I joined, was that they were a professional organization, really ar artists, uh, architects, urban planners, actually urban planning wasn't really a field at that time, but uh, people who did planning. Uh, and people were very concerned about the future of the city, about the, the public space, the built environment, and uh, they were concerned that industrialization was going to impact negatively uh, the building of the city. So the organization was formed to kind of protect um, the civic assets of the city. And I think that role continues to this day. And I think um, uh, it, MAS has changed over the course of uh, 120 years to be, um, I, I think New York City is kind of built out at this point. We're continuing to build, but all of the, the um, literally most of the physical space is, is filled. So I think our role as, ad, as advocates have not changed, and I think it's important to, to talk about advocacy, and I think we'll, we'll, we'll chat about this as, as we move forward. But, but there are lots of tools that we have now, uh, I think, which earlier in, in the last century, there were um, uh, institutions that that MAS helped to uh, structure. The, the organization was actually founded before New York City was incorporated into the five boroughs so that uh, we actually had a role in forming things like the, um, the design commission, uh, city planning, um, parts of, of city government that actually uh, do manage the, the public realm and, and the built environment. Um, and then later in the, in the century, the landmarks um, Preservation Commission. So we continue to be active. We have lots of partners in, in city government. We work closely with um, with our partners, particularly with the agencies that do do manage the public realm. We also um, work with our community partners uh, to to hear more from the um, the grassroots level, and we also do uh, quite a bit of education uh, and working with communities to help them understand when someone comes into your community and starts talking about uh, we're gonna rezone, we're gonna change the FAR, um, and there was a discussion yesterday about what FAR really means, I'm not gonna get into it right now, <laughs> but, but that um, uh, many people don't know some of the terminology that, that um, uh, government used to, to talk about buildings. So we help 
people to understand what what are the possible impacts and, and then what, what role can they play to be kind of better better citizens. And obviously we convene things like this, which is where the public comes to us for a really great conversation. So Gabe, what's happening in San Francisco? Where's Spur been and where is, well actually that's, let's not talk about where you're going yet because I want to get to that, uh, okay. but where have you been? What is, what's going on? Well, first of all, it's a real honor to be up here. We, we have learned a lot from MAS over the years and, and really admire the organization. So um, this kind of exchange between, between our cities, which um, uh, I think there's actually a lot we have to learn from each other. We're not quite as old as MAS Spur was founded in 1910, and our roots are in affordable housing. We were uh, originally the San Francisco Housing Association, um, really focused on, on um, public housing originally. As I guess, I think about what's really changed over uh, the, mo the more recent decades in our role as advocates, what really strikes me is this, is that after World War II, um, cities everywhere in the United States were losing population. And the defining problem was population flight and capital flight. And everything we geared up to do was about making the case for urbanism. It was about trying to convince companies to uh, reinvest in the central city and trying to convince uh, the middle class not to flee the central city and, and so, all of a sudden, uh, looks like we were a little too successful. <laughs> and, and I think that's, what's, uh, that's what we're dealing with now, right, is these, all of these, it's opposites day. We're dealing with uh, the problems of so much demand to be in the city, um, so much demand to create jobs in the city, and, and the pressures of growth are defining so much of what we're dealing with now. And so I think we're having to invent um, a, a new, a new set of tools, and we're having to have a different kind of conversation than we ever really imagined we would have. Um, and I think in that sense, New York and San Francisco are dealing with very similar um, uh, strengths and, and some really similar problems. So just talk a little bit about those tools. So both, I mean, again, the demographics and the issues have changed so significantly um, since the organizations started. What tools are you using or what, what, what innovation and tools are helpful right now to actually inc include a broader array of people as advocates um, within an advocacy organization? Or is there stuff you see going on right now that would be really, uh, that's interesting, I guess, in the world of advocacy? Well, I think the, the film that we that just preceded us, I think, is an example of one of the ways that we're, we're reaching out with uh, global partners. We're working around the world with different cities, and I think that communication with uh, both our national partners and international partners is really important to the conversation because there are issues that are common to, to all of our cities. There are also issues that, that that are distinct in, in different cities. Uh, and so, um, for instance, you know, we, we have the good fortune of having cities that are growing. There are many cities within the United States that are having the opposite problem where, where the urban centers are actually uh, becoming less dense and, and what that, that means for, for those cities. Um, so the, the, um, the film was um, uh, banned on Creative City Partners, which is part of our global network. So we, things like that, we're, where you're engaging directly with, with communities and in, in finding out what they value. Um, I think also um, we, we increasingly, um, we communicate obviously all of us through social media. There's a lot of conversations. We watch the Twitter feed. Um, we can get very quick reactions from people. We can also communicate very directly about, about what the concerns are. We, we have, um, a tool that we put online. There was a, a discussion going on around the um, uh, concern about tall towers going up around the city. People are looking at the skyline, watching these these um, buildings go up, and and people were asking questions like, "Well, where did those come from?" And it was kind of surprising to a lot of people because they didn't realize these things were were going to be happening. And and so we looked at some interactive tools to help people that are that are on our website for our accidental skyline, which tells you where 
we started to talk about where is new development likely to happen? Where are these towers mm -hmm. going to be built next? What are the neighborhoods that might want to start thinking about some of these things? So, so things like that are, are new kinds of tools that we're developing, which try to get out in front of the problem rather than always being reactive. Mm -hmm. How about you, Gabe? That you Tech, San Francisco is known so much uh, around the world for technology. Is technology playing a role at all in the, yeah. your advocacy work? And yeah, of course. Um, you, you know how I can tell if we've done a good job as advocates? It's, mm -hmm. it's when we've managed to change the conversation. Mm -hmm. and, and I think in the long run, th that's what is going to uh, determine the way cities evolve. And, and I think one of the great strengths about groups like MAS and SPUR is we're around for the long run. Change in cities is often the work of generations. Yeah. I, th I like to think of it that we, we're always asking, what is this generation going to contribute to the city? What are you going to leave behind so that the city uh, is better than the city you inherited? And so I think, in a sense, um, the core of good advocacy is, is about asking people to be aspirational. What does it mean to make a city today that is inclusive, that works for everyone, that is more ecologically sustainable than cities have ever been? We have to ask people to imagine the city being better. And then th that's, that's the hook. So when we're engaged in the scrum of daily politics and all the immediate decisions <laughs> getting made, we're hopefully, we're hopefully connecting that to a bigger vision. So that's great. Because what, what I think that we've defined is this continuum of work that both Spur and MAS has been doing over the past 100 <laughs> more years. Um, and there's these galvanizing, galvanizing moments, I think, in the history of both organizations where crowds need to find a home to be able to be heard, and the organizations have served that. Right now in New York City, we, the mayor has launched us 200,000 units over 10 years, which my office is managing. And um, we're trying to think about not only the ground swell up, because we know neighborhoods will be directly affected by, by the mayor's agenda, but I feel now I'm usually there coming up, but now I feel like I work for the city now and now it was a top-down sort of thing and I want to find a way of meeting in the middle. Um, what's next? Um, what, what are you guys doing to, and oh, actually one other preface is that San Francisco just hosted, you know, the, the High Cost Cities forums where um, ULI and MAS is this week. Um, the big discussion is around equitable cities and just cities. Um, how how do you how might MAS and Spur sort of then find this next galvanizing moments in the future of cities to engage people at different levels? Gabe, I'll why go don't you first. Start? Jump in first. Well, Gabe. boy, this this really is the issue of of the day, and and I can tell that if we work for three years on a paper about climate adaptation and we come up with an incredible strategy of what to do about sea level rise, people will say, eh, good job. But when we host a conversation about the housing crisis, we have hundreds and hundreds of people showing up. <laughs> and, and, and it really is a crisis for us. And uh, there are no easy answers. And I find myself in that role a lot of have, being sort of the bearer of bad news. Um, there are a lot of things we can do. And at least in the case of, of San Francisco, we kind of did it to ourselves. Um, I mean, there's no Republicans in the whole city, right? So, uh, 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 but uh, I don't think we have any here no, either. Just, we, the, 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 there's Google bus riders. We did it to ourselves. <laughs> it's going to take a while to to uh, to, to uh, deal with it. But I really, I mean, this is a moment when a group like ours is called on to really step up with some new approaches and some new ideas, and in some cases, to tell people things that they don't want to hear. Hmm. But I, I would say that that in this city, if you do convene a, a group, which we were very involved in the resiliency in post Sandy, that you do get a huge room full of people talking about climate change here. So, and more about um, uh, adaptation and, and resiliency issues. But but I think that. Um, one of the things that I think both of our organizations managed to do, I would say, well, uh, and something that I think um, 
governments don't do so well is to really listen and move quickly. And I think that we, we have the capability of convening people both from the private sector, from public sector, from all across the, the sort of interest groups within the city. And so that conversation is, is very, very informative in terms of what the, what the key issues are. So the ability to synthesize that is, is just critical to, right. to and finding a central home for it. We're going to have to wrap up, but um, I want to say that both of the organizations are incredibly important to the future of the cities, particularly in MAS, and just for people who don't know, I'm, I'm now going to head the planning committee for the MAS, and part of the role that I want to play is making sure that the voice and the capacity that MA has goes out into the boroughs so that we begin engaging neighborhoods in, as neighborhoods begin to change um, uh, throughout the New York City boroughs. So um, anyway, thank you everyone here for being here today, and thank you guys for- Thank you.